What's up, Phrase? Welcome to Athia. This is Kaz, and I'll be your guide. I'm going to be spending this video showing you around this magical, mystical, and dangerous as land of Athia. Remember, likes and subscribes are always appreciated, and I'm in my push to a thousand subs because the second I make even a single dime from any of these videos, half is going to go to a charity that we choose together every month. I love making these videos, I just want to do some good as well. Okay, so what the hell is a beginner and why should you be watching this video? Well, I made this for the section of the game where you have phrase magic or purple magic and Silas magic or red magic. I've put over 25 hours into the full game and 25 hours into this like demo if that helps you at all. And I would say up to and including chapters 5, 6, 7-ish is where this video is relevant. I have some helpful tips separated out into sections starting with things that will make your life easier, tips to help you upgrade faster, lots of goodies on how to get your badass sorcery skills where they need to be, and some guidance on where to go first and story progression. So let me just take a second to say, you know, guides like this are a little complicated because there's tips and there's your style. So I think the number one thing to keep in mind is hopefully these help you, but your style is really important. How you want to explore, how you want to engage in combat and upgrade, all of that's important too. So hopefully some of this helps inform your style, starting with some things that can make your life easier in Athia. That's our first part. Athia is a big place and there are some things you can do right off the bat to help you get oriented. So when you get to a new area, start by looking for the refuge. This is where you can craft, upgrade, spell craft, do some spell crafting and rest. Look for belfries that can help you get the lay of the land and also save you time because you can fast travel there too. And damn, Forspoken fast travel is fast, y'all. Like straight up teleportation. That's been wonderful, not having load screens. Home? Founts will give you spells Thank when you, you visit them. So those are great to prioritize because, hey, who doesn't want a free spell? One other thing that kind of helped me get oriented early on is by reminding myself there's no shortage of treasure and break butt heads out there to beat up. So I would say worry about those after you've gotten oriented and stick around to the end to learn a little bit more about what to do once the map opens up. Another tip that's really helped me early on is using the cuff compass in cities and castles in particular. By holding up on the D-pad on PS5, cuff will show you the route to your next objective. The compass is also helpful if you're trying to find a way up some terrain that's really annoying to try and get up. So the map and its features in Forspoken are pretty legit. When you see a new area, it shows you where everything is, which can really help with exploring and being real efficient with how you get around. It's also great because you can zoom in and it becomes 3D, which is great to see if there is something on the other side of a wall or the best path you need to go to get where you need to go. I use waypoints a ton in this game to really help me save some time and chart the best path or progression to what I'm looking for so definitely appreciate the 3d map and those waypoints all right next and not just because it looks really cool but you can press triangle to open a chest while you're in mid-air or parkouring and this is great if you need to smash and grab a chest a chest from a mutant that you aren't ready to fight or open a chest while you're panic climbing up something and worried you might not land right where you need to yeah, so not gonna lie, the next one, I pretty much spam up on the D-pad. Cuff scans help you find goodies and people to talk to in cities, help you see where collectibles are, and help you scout enemies, so use cuff scan a lot, I say. Next is scouting with cuff. So speaking of scouting, let's talk about how Forspoken does you some favors with how it allows you to scout. When you press up on the D-pad to do a cuff scan and you scan a bogey, you can press up again to get scouting uh, scouting report. And this includes, very importantly, what magic that bogey is vulnerable to. The arrows on the wheel in the upper right indicate what the bogey is resistant to and what they're vulnerable to. The way I remember is up is like thumbs up, as in, yes, use that. They're vulnerable to it. Down is thumbs down, or don't use it because they're resistant. Don't forget to read the blurb, too. Sometimes it offers hints on how to hack a baddie. There's even more in-depth scouting you can do. And another way to get even more info is by finding the bogey type in the archive. So here it will show you their max health, attack rating, experience, and all that can be used to determine if you're ready to take on that baddie or maybe come back when you you're a more badass sorceress. 
there's a lot of info out there about the best settings. Well, I don't know if there's really best settings, but I will show you what I used and what might be helpful for you early on, though I appreciate there's a lot of individual preference. Early on, I looked to have spell switching to full pods because we all need time to learn, and this helped me get used to what spells are where without having to worry about a bird swooping and break stabbing me in the chest. God damn, those birds, y'all. Automatically using heal items is nice as well as this one less thing to worry about. Lastly, I use automatic support spell switching because it feels like the best of all worlds. I can still use the spell wheel to get the right spell for the right job and by automatically rotating to whatever is ready, I can use something in a pinch and that's not gonna have me in my spell wheel all the time. Now let's talk about accessibility settings first. There's a lot here, so definitely play around. Other than that, I've really appreciated automatic item gathering just to make life a little easier and changing leap soar to semi-automatic so you aren't having to press circle as much when trying to climb to something high. Last thing in this section is talking about what you can do after you beat the game and new game plus, and that's important because it can help inform what you do even in the early game. I've been trying to figure this out and it's still not super clear, so hit me up in the comments if you have more details. It seems to me before the final boss, there's time to go wrap anything up, including some trophies. Just remember that some detours and side missions go away after you progress, so be careful there. It also sounds like you can roam after you beat the boss, but again, I'm still not clear, so let me know if you have any more details. How it begins, part two of my Welcome to Athia Beginner's Guide. Welcome fellow Athians. There's so much you can do early to go from sucky to sorceress if you know what to do. So let's get going with part two. So when I first started the game, I was like, look at all this freaking free mana. And I picked up everything I saw and it helped me unlock a ton of magic fast. Just note though that there is a ton of mana so far. So definitely get what you see, but don't worry about getting every single one because it is just abundant how much magic is oozing out of the earth. Now, you can get more mana by leveling up with experience points from fighting the break baddies and discovering locations and progressing the story. But if you want mana fast, really, you should just look around. Now, I was going to do a video on farming mana, but then I was kind of like, nah, because there's mana f everywhere. That said, it does seem to be more concentrated around these magic, not very well made cotton candy sculptures. Mm, yum yum in the magic tum tum next is look up which is an amazing song by joy Olad oladukin which you should definitely look up but there's a lot of mana and treasure waiting for you if you're ready to do a lot of climbing early on so just note that if you see something tall there's prob there's likely to be a treasure or mana on top of it and as you're making your way up trying to land maybe on a very small platform to open a chest well if you're in midair or just not a very straight shooter jumping around all over the place, just press triangle to open up the treasure chest when you see it and there will be an automation, like an automation will queue and you can par copen, par corpin, par corpin it up. Next is finders keepers. Another quick thing is just to make sure to visit the finders keepers when you return to Sabal. Sabalians, Sabalites, Sabals? Sibals, yeah, Sibals leave their trash there, and one person's trash is another person's rocks and crafting items to make a Tanta's bag for mercy. Spellcrafting early on is massive to become a badass sorceress. Spellcrafting is taking up a challenge for a particular skill to upgrade it. You can do this at the bookshelves and refuges, or some just places to rest, or some of the archives, but make sure to always have three spellcraft challenges going at once and prioritize your combat to focus on them when you're out in the world. Sometimes you can knock an entire challenge out in one skirmish. <laughs> That's it. Another tip for getting good fast is prioritizing monuments and founts. Some monuments will just give you stuff. Free stuff like health, stamina, increased magic. So of course if you're trying to be a badass sorceress, you don't turn down free stuff, do you? No, of course not. Same with the founts, which give you free spells. Now you can unlearn a spell to convert it back to mana, basically relocking the spell so you can redistribute your mana to one you feel is more necessary so it's an option but again Ocean there is so much mana that you really shouldn't need to
And now the tips I know a lot of people are waiting for, and by a lot of people I mean the five people who aren't taking a dump on this game on the internet and actually playing it. These are early spell unlocks, starting with Phrase Magic, which is Burst Shot. That's my number one thing that you should upgrade. Get your spell crafts done early. Burst Shot is incredibly powerful, especially at a level three. Then you, you also want to upgrade your Surge Magic, which is Tendril, and Vivify, which will help you upgrade your necklaces. On to Silas Magic, you want to upgrade Arc Slice. That's been my go-to attack spell, and at level 3, it has a huge AoE. You also want to get Amplify unlocked. It's pretty expensive, but it'll help you upgrade your Cloaks and Conflagration, which is the Surge Magic, which again has a huge range and does tons of damage, so definitely worth prioritizing. So my tip around early spell crafting really is the same as those early spell unlocks. Just move quickly through spell crafting on those particular skills and then just do everything. Like it's a great time early on to help you get acquainted with the different attacks in the game, the different support magics. The beauty of spell crafting is it's really there to teach you how to be great at combat. So I, my tip for you really is just to do all of them. Now, in terms of early best nails, what I've been really going with is Aftershock. It makes it so a killer blow generates this sort of wave, this AoE damage, and blows people back. So that's been really great because you can killer blow into a crowd and do damage to a lot of different break baddies. Early gear customization, you can see what I'm pretty much using most of the time here. This is my Shrift Cloak where I've upgraded as much as I can, but I really focus on the attack customization for my cloak. So critical hits can boost attack critical and critical hits. Critical hits can restore health and auto heal. Can be helpful too, but I would honestly focus on things that are just gonna do more damage. And for my necklace, it's the same thing. Damage boosted when surge magic is not fully charged. Critical damage boosted support magic deals extra damage. I like these because it, it allows you to do a lot more damage, particularly with your critical hits, which I'll get to in a little bit. In terms of what to read, I didn't love many of these, but I did like Ballad of Boiling Blood because it allows to um, crafting that increases critical hit damage. So again, you can see I've kind of gone the way of critical hits early. One other quick note that for some reason in this game where some places you can craft and rest aren't labeled, like the one in Sepal, which is above the tavern, so just note that there's also one in your quest to get Sila that it's never marked on the map. So I'm sort of showing you where it is here, and I hope that helps. And while we're watching Frey run to do some crafting, just another reminder to like and subscribe as I'm in my push to 1,000 subs. Next is fire crafting. So fire crafting is just a reminder that you can hold down on the D-pad on PS5 to start a fire and get um, to a place where you can do upgrades and you can craft. So let's go over what you can do where, because it can be a little confusing. In a refuge, you can craft, you can do upgrading, and this is where you can almost, where you can always do some spell crafting. When you do a campfire, you can do crafting, upgrading, and of course resting, which will refill your health. And when you're out on the fly, not at a refuge or a campfire, just running around, you can always change your gear. If you complete a spellcraft challenge, you can do the upgrade on the fly. You don't have to go to a bookcase. You can unlock magic with mana. You can change your gear and change your nails. And that, y'all, brings us to part three, getting combat ready. This has been my favorite part of the game, particularly mixing in parkour, magic parkour with combat. So I wanna give you everything you need to be a badass sorceress early on. And that starts with understanding the rating system. There are two reasons you want to understand the rating system. One is if you get a good grade in a skirmish or a fight, you're gonna get they're gonna drop more goodies that you can then pick up. Also, because getting a good rating pretty much means you're being efficient and good in battle. So the notes that I'll offer you are taking less damage, which I know that's obvious, but you really want to focus on that. You also want to focus on doing a variety of spells. That'll help with your grade. Precision countering and countering can be good to keep your score up because basically it'll take a lot away when you get damaged, but give you some back when you counter. Next is practice. So basically during the demo, I was kind of like, hmm, I'm not sure if I'm gonna love the combat of this game. And then one day I just sat down and I practiced spells, switching between spells, different spell combinations, and incorporating magic parkour more. And 
I fell in love. That's what made me buy the game. The, the combination of combat and magic parkour has just been delightful. Every Even though some of the fights and baddies are repetitive, the combat always feels fun and nuanced. You're mine. And one of the nuances worth highlighting is critical hits. The game tells you a little bit about this, but not a lot. Critical hits are these yellow numbers that pop up when you're doing using attack magic and support magic. And there are specific situations where you're going to get critical hits. And those include when you attack and hit a bogey on the side or behind. Uh, the last attack in a base combo attack, typically that's a three or four phase combo, just hitting R2 with the magic. And the last one will be a critical hit. Also, if you attack while in midair or during magic parkour, that usually or often does a critical hit a killer blow is considered a critical hit and some support magic like implant will help you get more critical hits so critical hits and this oh, tip damn. auto charge are the two things the game doesn't tell you very much about but are absolutely essential to being a badass sorceress so auto charging is basically holding r2 after an action in order to automatically charge whatever attack spell you have so you can see in this video i've got my blast spell going and if you hold R2 from the air, it'll throw a rock, and then it will very quickly charge whatever attack spell you have. Same if you do it from magic parkour, or after using support magic, if you hold R2, it will automatically charge your attack spell. And after a base combo, which is again just tapping R2 three to four times, will do your base combo, and after that, if you hold R2, you'll well, auto charge. And while auto charge and critical hits are my number one and two tips for attack, when it comes to defense, really the most important thing in combat and maybe the number one combat tip is using evade and magic parkour to be way more mobile than everyone else you're fighting. Move around them and then while you're in the air, while you're jumping over tangos, you can use your magic to then critical hit, auto charge, Go back into evading and magic parkour. Use some of those tips we just went over again. Rinse and repeat and you got this. As we wrap up this section, I will tell you I go into way more detail about early to mid game combat in my 15 essential forespoken combat tips video. So definitely go check that out. That brings us to our fourth and final section of this starter kit for my fellow Athians. And this is all about where to go first, which I'm going to say right off the bat, I always struggle with this because people play the game so differently. You could just follow the storyline or you could go pick up every single piece of mana, get all OP'd out and take down any baddie out there. The little bit I do have to offer is focus on getting your red magic sooner rather than later. I basically had all of my purple magic upgraded before I got red magic, but it meant that I had to like skip some fights I didn't want to because I didn't have the right magic for the job. Also, don't forget that some detours slash side missions um, go away if you don't get them uh, soon enough, so just keep that in mind. And the last thing is just use the open world as an opportunity to practice and get really good with your magic and your magic combinations. That, my friends, will go such a long way in getting you where you need to go early on. And that's it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'm in my push to a thousand subs and I really look forward to your like and subscribe.